Hey guys, the last time we read chapter 16, today we're reading chapter 17. And chapter 16 was mostly about how Luke and Jen began their relationship. And they also made a plan that if it was safe for Jen to come, if it was safe for Luke to come over, then Jen would turn on the porch light and so would Luke. And so now we're going to see if they continue with their friendship in chapter 17. Luke spent practically every second of the next three days either reliving, reliv, reliving his secret visit to Jen or planning another one. The first day, a government inspector came out to examine the gardener's crops. So Luke stayed in his room the entire day. The second day, it rained, and Dad spent the morning doing bookwork in the house. The third day, Dad was back in the field, but when Luke crept over to the balcony, door, the back door promptly at 9 a.m. and Darily flipped the switch, light switch, he got no answering flash from Jen's house. Maybe the clocks in her house were slow. He left the light on for 15 whole minutes, terrified the whole time that someone besides Jen might see it. Finally, heartsick, he switched it off and climbed with shaky legs back to his room. What if something had happened to Jen? What if she were sick, dying, even alone in her house? What if she'd been caught or turned in? Just from the little time Luke had spent with her, he could tell she took a lot of risk. It never had occurred to him that knowing another person would give him someone else to worry about. He steadied himself by leaning against the wall at the top of the stairs and reminding himself of less frightening possibilities. Maybe one of her parents was just out running errands, not working, so they were going to be home soon. Maybe he tried to think of another safe reason Jen hadn't signaled for him to come, but he had so much trouble, so much trouble picturing her ordinary life that his imagination failed him. He found out the next day when he risked a dash to Jen's house as soon as Jen answered his signal. Where were you? He asked instantly. When? Yesterday? She yawned, sliding the door shut behind him. Did you try to come over? I'm sorry. Mom had a free day and made me go shopping. Luke gaped at her. Shopping? You went out? Jen nodded nonchalantly. But I didn't see you leave, Luke protested. Jen looked at him as if she seriously wondered if he had a brain. Of course not. I was hiding. The backseat of our cars hollowed out. Dad had it custom built. You went out? Luke repeated in awe. Well, it's not like I saw anything until he got to the mall. Two hours of riding in the dark is not my idea of fun. I hate it. But at the mall? You got out? You didn't have to hide? Jen laughed at his amazement. Mom got me a Ford shopping pass a long time ago. Supposedly, I'm her niece. It's good enough to convince store clerks. But if the population please ever found me in a roadside stop, I'd be dead. There you have it. My mother's priorities. Shopping is more important than my life. Luke shook his head and sat down on the couch because his knees were feeling a little shaky. I didn't know, he said. I didn't know thirds could do that. What if mother and dad got him a forge pass for a minute? He could almost picture it. They could hide him under burlap bags in the pickup truck bed until they got into town. Everybody in town knew mother and dad. Everybody knew mother and dad had only two sons. Matthew and Mark. You went to the city? He said. Well, yeah, Jen said. You don't see any malls around here, do you? What was it like? Luke almost whispered. Boring, Jen said. Really, really boring. Mom wanted to buy me a dress. Who knows why? So we went to one, one store after another. And I had to try on all these dresses that scratched and pricked and poked me. And then she made me get a bunch of other things. Matt. Sorry. But anyway, Jen said with a bounce that propelled her off the couch, I checked you out on the computer and you're all right. You don't exist. Not officially anyway. So you're safe and hearing Jace, Jen say that so flippantly, you don't exist, made Luke feel funny. How do you know I'm safe? He interrupted. Fingerprints, Jen said. When Luke gave her <clears throat> a blank look, he explained, my brother Braun went through this phase when he wanted to be a detective. Not that he ever would have been smart enough for it. And I remember he still had a fingerprinting kit. So I dusted for your fingerprints on things you touch. Just like on TV. I got a really good print off the wall. Then I scanned it into the computer. Linked it into the national file of fingerprints. And voila. I discovered your fingerprints don't exist. So neither do you. Officially. She made a mocking face for emphasis. Luke wanted to ask. The population police can't find me because of what you did, can they? But he understood so little of what she explained that he didn't think it would have it would help to ask anything. And Jim was already out onto the next thought. 
And anyhow, you seem trustworthy. So, now that I know you're safe, I can tell you about the rally and show you our secret chat rooms and everything. Jen was already leaving the room, so we had to follow just to hear the rest of her sentence. Want something to eat or drink? She asked, hesitating in the doorway and to the grand kitchen. I was so surprised I forgot to be a good hostess the last time. What will it be? Soda? Potato chips? <gasps> but those are illegal! Luke protested. Stop for a second. Things like soda, potato chips, non-nutritious foods are illegal because it takes, you know, time to create it in the factories that don't have the workforce. And also, you're using, like, the potatoes as, like, this... It's, it's not helping you become full. So they don't want to give it to you. They want you to become nutritious because they don't have a lot of food to go around. So they're going to make unhealthy things. But those are illegal, Luke protested. He remember reading something about junk food in one of the books in the attic and asking his mother about it. She explained that it was something people used to eat all the time until the government shut down the factories that made it. She wouldn't tell him why. But as a special treat, she brought out a bag of potato chips she'd been saving for years and shared them just with him. They were salty but hard to chew. Luke can't pretend to like them, only because Mother seemed to want him to. Yeah, well, we're illegal too, so why shouldn't we enjoy ourselves? Jen asked, thrusting a bowl of chips at him. To be polite, Luke took one chip, and then another, and another. These potato chips were so good. He had to hold himself back from grabbing them by the handful. Jen stared at him. Uh, do you go hungry sometimes? Jen asked in a low voice. No, Luke said in surprise. Well, some shadow children do because they don't have enough ration cards and the rest of the family doesn't share. All right. So, because there isn't enough food for everybody, you just can't go to the grocery store and buy as much, you know, packs of eggs or loaves of bread you want. Um, you have to, um, you have like little ration cards that the government issues to you like every month. And so, like, you would take this card and you would buy your carton of eggs. You, you know, of course, you're using money, but... You're using also this card at the same time that shows how much you can buy. Um, they don't let you just go buy 10 packs of eggs if you want to. You have It only lets you go have so many at once. So, see, 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 see. My family can get all the food we want, of course, but she looked at him in a way that once again made him conscious, conscious of his ragged clothes. How does your family get food for you? The question puzzled Luke. The same way they get it for themselves, she, he said. We grow it. We have a garden. I used to work in it a lot before, you know. And then we have the hogs, or we used to. And I guess sometimes we trade a butchered hog for someone else's butcher's steer. So then we have beef. Those were all shadowy transactions in Luke's mind. He just strained his brain to remember overhearing Dad or Matthew reporting to Mother. Ready to cook some steak? Johnson up near Libertyville wants some ham, said Dad. Jen dropped a plastic bottle full of brown liquid. You eat meat, she exclaimed. Sure, don't you, Luke asked. When Dad can get it, Jen said, bidding to pick up the bottle. She poured a glass full for Luke and one for herself. Both drinks fizzled and bubbled. Even his clout isn't that great. The government's been trying to force everyone, even the barons, to become vegetarians. Okay, the reason the government's trying to force everybody to become vegetarians, let's just, like, do my hands. So, let's say this. Let's say that I grow food, all right, and let's say I grow food here, 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 and here, okay? So, I've got four plots of food the government, you know, is is mandating. So, I've grown that food. Well, all of that food here, 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 can go to a person. Those all can go to a person to eat. So, that, that, that food is, that, that land that's being used can grow to a person. Remember, this is a world where there's not enough land the world has become overpopulated. That's what they're saying. So there's only so many places that food can be grown properly. So you got four, four plots of food, and you can feed all that food to a person. Got it? Okay, now, that land is being used. Let's say I had cows. Cows require a lot of land. So now, instead of having these four plots of food, let's say this plot right here is for cows. To, grow, to, you know, to live and thrive. And yes, they eat grass and things, but they also eat other types of things. Well, I've got to take this plot of food here and grow it to feed those cows. And so, yes, I'm going to eat those cows later on, but the cows may need this plot of food and this plot of food. 
So the only plot of food that's left is this plot of food for me that's grown. Yes, I'll eat the cows eventually, but the cows are, are needing to eat as well so they can grow. So the thought process is we don't, we eliminate the meat, we eliminate the cows and everything else that needs to eat um, the food that's grown. And those resources can go to people. Um, it sounds complicated, but it, it makes sense whenever you're trying to figure out who you need to feed. Now, later on in the book, you're going to see that um, they don't even have pets. So people don't have cats and dogs and all that. They become illegal. And the reason is because cats and dogs need to eat. Well, they're not trying to feed anything they don't need to feed. They just want to make sure the people are getting fed. So third child laws passed. The government's trying to get everybody to be vegetarians. There's a lot of laws and regulations on food production um, and how they're distributing the food. So they're using the ration cards to distribute the food. So there's many different things that the government is trying to control in this totalitarian government. All right. Where was that? Mm. <clears throat> okay. The government has been trying to force everyone, even the barons, to become vegetarians. Why? Luke asked. Jen handed him his glass. Something about vegetables being more efficient, she said. Farmers have to use a lot more land to produce one pound of meat than to produce a pound of, what's it called, soybeans? Luke wrinkled his nose at the thought of eating soybeans. I don't know, he said slowly. We always fed our hogs the grain that we couldn't sell because it didn't meet government standards. But since the government made us get rid of our hogs, Dad just lets that grain rot in the field. Really? Jen grinned as if she had just announced the overthrow of the government. She thumped him on the back just as he took his first sip of soda. Between the bubbly drink and her enthusiastic pounding, Luke started coughing. Jen didn't seem to notice. See, I told you be a big help. I'm going to post that on the bulletin board right now. Wait. Luke sputtered between coughs. He didn't know what she was talking about, but he couldn't let her get his family in trouble. He chased her down the hall, catching up just as she was sliding into the chair in front of the computer. She switched it on, and it made a beep, 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 beep sounds. Luke had heard the last time. Luke stood to the sign, side, carefully out of sight of the screen. Another thing is, like, the government is controlling food production so heavily that some grain or whatever maybe if it doesn't grow tall enough then they don't get to cut it um like i know that i i know a little bit about corn and corn has to be like so long for um farmers now farmers now to sell it and if the corn grows too long like long long then they don't let them sell it or if the grow, corn doesn't grow that big they don't let them sell it it's still edible we can still eat it we can still you know um, sell it at a farmer's market or whatever, but the government won't let you sell it if it's not, you know, doesn't meet certain standards. So we even have those kind of logs now. And I know that I was talking to some farmers a couple years ago, and they said that um, there was too much corn that was being grown in the U.S. at one point. And because of that, um, the government didn't let them pick it or just told them they didn't need it. So they let it rot in the fields because too many people were trying to sell too much corn. And that happens with all types of things. They don't want to have like way too much trying to go into grocery stores and then it brings the prices really low down. It doesn't even you know matter to sell it because you've spent more money to grow it and pick it and everything else. All right, here we go. Luke stood to the side, carefully out of sight of the screen. It's not going to bite you, Jen said. Grab a chair, sit down. Luke inched back. But the government, he said. The government's incompetent and stupid, Jen said. Get it? Believe me. If they were watching through my computer screen, I'd know by now. Meekly, Luke pulled over a padded chair and sat down. He watched as Jen typed in, If the government let farmers feed their animals the grain they can't sell, there'd be more meat. Luke was relieved that she hadn't mentioned his family. But unless the government was spying on them, he couldn't understand what difference it made for her to write that. Where did that go? He asked as the words disappeared. Who's going to see that? I put it on the Department of Agricultural Bulletin Board. Anyone with a computer can find it now. Maybe government worker with half a brain will see it and actually think for the first time this decade. But Luke squinted in confusion. What does it matter? Jen fixed her gaze on Luke. 
You don't even know, do you? She asked. You don't know why they passed the population law. Mm, no, Luke admitted. It's all about food, Jen said. The government was scared we'd run out of food. If the population kept growing, that's why they made you and me illegal, to keep people from starving. Luke suddenly felt doubly guilty for the potato chips he was still cramming into his mouth. He squat, swallowed hard and lowered his hands to his lips instead of back into the chip bowl. So if I don't eat any, my food would go to someone who was legal, Luke said. But in his family, they would just be Matthew and Mark, and they were hardly starving. Matthew was even starting to spout, sport the same roll of fat around his waist that Dad had. Then Luke remembered the tramp from long ago saying, I ain't ate in three days. Was that Luke's fault? Jen laughed. Stop looking so worried, she said. That is what the government thinks. But they're wrong. My dad says there's plenty of food. It's not distributed right. That's why they're going to stop the population. That's why we're going to, sorry. That's why they've got to stop the population with law. That's why they've got to recognize you and me and all the other shadow kids. That's why we're going to have the rally. As ignorant as he was, Luke could tell from the way she said it, that the rally was important. Can you tell me about the rally now? He asked humbly. Yes, Jen said. She pushed, she pushed away from the computer and twirled on her chair. Hundreds of us, all the shadow children I could track down, are going to march on the government in protest. We'll go right to the president's house. We won't leave them alone until they give us the same rights everybody else has. Just my luck. My luck, Jen, Luke thought. I finally meet another third child, and she's absolutely crazy. And... Jen said, as bubbly as a shaken soda. You can come too. Want to be great? Ooh. Do you think Luke's going to go to the the, law, the rally to end population law 30693 or whatever it is? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we know Luke's a little bit, you know, more timid and scared than Jen is. Jen's very brave. So, All right, guys. That was chapter 17. I'll see you next time.